Hello everyone, today I'm back in World of Guns, Gun dis Disassembly and today we have uh, yet again probably one of the most iconic firearms of all time uh, as, you can as you can see this time we are uh, gonna be taking a look at and disassembling uh, an AK um, more specifically uh, an AK-47 um, so let's jump ahead into the field strip portion and uh, I'm probably gonna tell you some stuff about it uh, while we take it apart. Alright, so the AK-47. Um, right, so there's a lot of information out about this rifle so I'm not gonna go into uh, a lot of detail because I'll probably get it wrong. Um, but uh, if I compress the uh, the info that I know, um, first of all, uh, this rifle was developed after the World War II, after the World War II, after World War II, in uh, the Soviet Union, um, and was developed with um, with some of the uh, German uh, designers who worked on the STG 44 um, and the STG 43, I guess. Um, so it bears quite a bit of or some similarities to that rifle uh, so that uh, that would be the first assault rifle uh, built by the Germans during World War II um, it is it has a very similar profile um, it the the operating system uh, as for the gas piston is the same uh, however it has uh, a different uh, locking mechanism um, it has it is obviously in a different cartridge um, the AK was developed for uh, 762 by 39 millimeter uh, and then later um, with the AK 74 the cartridge was uh, changed to 545 uh, making uh, a smaller bullet which uh, would be uh, a better uh, cartridge all round basically um, but before that, uh, it was the 7.62, uh, which is still uh, quite widely used in many countries, um, both militarily and uh, on the civilian market as well. Um, so basically, uh, the first of these guns were stamped uh, from sheet metal, just like the German, uh, the German uh, uh, Sturmgewehrs. Uh, however. Uh, at at that time, the Soviets did not have um, sufficient knowledge uh, of stamping uh, sheet metal, um, and uh, the the guns weren't uh, weren't the best quality. Uh, they weren't reliable, uh, and so after some uh, tinkering, they decided to um, mill the low receivers. Um, for the time that they would take to uh, actually develop the proper stamping procedures. So basically um, the first AKs were, were, were milled receivers right after the, the first stamp ones. They went to milled and uh, they made quite a, a lot of them. Now I, I don't know the numbers but this is one of the most if not the most produced rifle of all time probably. Um, so basically uh, the mill receivers got them uh, a couple more years um, and in that time they would develop uh, the proper stamping procedures to actually make the receivers uh, and all the, compo the, all of the sh uh, sheet metal components properly and uh, after they, uh, they developed that they went ahead and uh, started making the guns with those parts so uh, they would uh, just be full sheet metal uh, guns and of course that would make them much lighter uh, much cheaper obviously to make um, and they could make a whole bunch more of them uh, so that was um, that was uh, probably um, very successful and then um, I'm not sure if the AK uh, probably that was the AKM uh, I would assume um, and then uh, after that, uh, they went. The Soviets went for the uh, AK-74. Uh, we're probably gonna take that one apart at some point as well, uh, which it is exactly the same, only it uses a different cartridge. Um, but some a 
quite a, f uh, a large number of other countries didn't actually switch to the new cartridge because obviously uh, doing such a thing is vastly expensive and uh, many uh, countries couldn't uh, afford that cost so they just stuck with uh, 762 um, so anyway um, that's pretty much a bit of the of the background let's go into some technical details here um, we've got um, quite a simple uh, rifle so basically uh, how it works is we've got um, a, uh, a gas piston up front here uh, which is this thing up above the barrel um, and uh, that is directly connected to the boat um, or the boat carrier I guess and uh, it just moves it back and forth uh, we've got uh, a rotating uh, I believe three lug bolt it is um, so that's how it locks um, and um, that's about it um, so let's field strip it and uh, you see uh, you see how it looks inside so the mag is very uh, the mag is a very distinct one uh, this uh, oh shit I've uh, oh shit okay that was weird I've just uh, descended from the abyss okay that's um, I'm not sure <laughs> can I just like I don't even. Oh, for Christ's sake. Okay, right. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, what was. Oh, the hell was that that we, take, well, that we took apart before? Oh, it's the cleaning kit, right. Why is that important for the gun? So weird. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a cleaning kit in the, uh, in the buttstock. There's a trapdoor in there, as you can see. Okay. So first of all, uh, I believe uh, we can just take off the top cover here, pressing the the button there. Uh, there's a there's a cleaning rod there that we can take out as well. Um, okay. So here you can see pretty much the whole inside of the of the rifle. Um, now this top cover is just a sheet metal piece and it's not very um, securely mounted. It's just there to uh, keep most of the debris out of the action so you can't really mount any any sort of optics on that and um, it is a bit of a struggle um, but maybe not that much at all because um, what generally happens is uh, there is a sort of a mounting rail that mounts to the receiver to the bottom here uh, to the side basically screws on there and then it sort of loops around on the top and uh, you can have a rail there and, and stuff so uh, it basically just um, uh, removes the uh, the top car from the equation um, as you can see the the back the rear side is mounted on this uh, on this block which is basically the trunnion um, so um, basically both of the sides are directly mounted to the barrel uh, the front one has this very distinct uh, sort of um, tower, I guess. Um, and uh, the sights are very simple, um, just open, open type sights. Um, and they, these were standard uh, at the beginning, obviously. Uh, obviously, later the Soviets and many other um, armies went to the uh, to some sort of uh, magnified optic or red dots or whatever they're using nowadays um, I should really say that this rifle uh, was developed as a sort of a cross uh, a perfect cross between a rifle and a submachine gun uh, so as you can see it has a very large mag especially for the time uh, 30 rounds and uh, you could dump those out pretty quickly on full auto of course it was full auto and then um, it had decent enough sights that you can uh, take shots uh, fairly um, far away. I mean, not extreme distances, but uh, not too shabby either. Uh, the lockup is solid enough that uh, it's uh, fairly accurate and the barrel is also not that short. So you can see how that, that makes it uh, like a nice cross between a submachine gun and a rifle. Okay, so if we continue here, um, 
Oh yeah, and also I should say, the reason it was developed like that is because uh, they tried to, um, the Soviets saw the incredible uh, use of submachine guns in World War II. Um, they had some very great ones and also the Germans obviously. Uh, and they saw their potential but they sort of wanted to have a little bit more of a, of a range. Um, so they went with the intermediate cartridge which is much more controllable during full auto fire. Um, which was a step up from the uh, pistol calibers that were uh, generally used in the submachine guns. Um, and also uh, they added some rifle ergonomics uh, which would help uh, to extend the range and uh, they would basically try to um, they would basically try to replace all of their other rifles and submachine guns with just one rifle uh, which would be the AK and they sort of managed to do that uh, but uh, this is pretty much the the modern concept of the submachine gun um, obviously uh, nowadays with uh, magnified optics and uh, like red dots and stuff you can extend the range of this kind of rifle even more than they could uh, back in the back in the day um, so anyway we can take out this uh, recoil assembly um, so that's just uh, the the recoil spring uh, and the guide rod uh, which also holds on the uh, the back of the uh, the top cover and then the bolt and the bolt carrier and the gas piston all come out of the back um, so here you can see the bolt it is sort of three lug um, and then this as I said the gas piston directly connected to basically the bolt carrier um, so we can take out the bolt body and that's it for that part uh, we can also take out the handguard which is also the gas piston tube and that's it uh, very simple to uh, to disassemble now we can uh, put this stuff back um, let's put the bolt back in here and then just put it back in the action and then we're gonna go for the spring and the guide rod that goes in there with the top cover and also the mag uh, and we've got some weird accessories as well so the cleaning rod and the uh, the cleaning kit there we go alright there we go let's uh, let's uh, what should we do? Operation first of all? Let's do operation first of all and then we'll, uh, we'll take it apart and uh, put it back together hopefully um, right so uh, this big lever on the side is the selector lever so it's both for safe and fire and also for full auto uh, and semi-auto um, and that's pretty much the only control uh, on the rifle other than the trigger um, and the mag release uh, so let's take some shots and also uh, let's go for some slow motion so you'll we'll be able to see what the hell is going on you can basically see directly in the action um, and here you can see one of the weaknesses of this rifle there's a a large portion or a, a, like a slot there in the in the um, in the top cover uh, which has to be there because of the reciprocating charging handle on the side um, and uh, that is uh, one of the weaknesses of this rifle because uh, dirt and debris can get in there and uh, it can jam up the action uh, it is it can be covered by the um, by the safety lever as you can see here um, but obviously um, if you don't have that engaged uh, while, when your gun falls in mud inevitably uh, you're gonna have some trouble okay other other than that obviously uh, this is um, just uh, one of the most reliable rifles you can uh, ever ever get uh, and that's because it doesn't have very tight tolerances you don't have to have uh, it uh, meticulously clean and you don't have to uh, have it uh, looped very well uh, it would just work forever if it didn't have any large debris in there uh, in the action 
so that's one of the attractions of this of this rifle uh, but obviously it uh, brings some uh, some negatives obviously um, the rifle is less precise because of the looser tor tolerances um, it has uh, it is um, I mean the gas system is quite um, harsh it has uh, it dumps quite a lot of energy into the action because obviously you need that to uh, stay reliable uh, the consequence of that is that you have more recoil um, and um, yeah that's pretty much it okay so what else should what else should we do so I've used the safety uh, there's a full auto for the seconds there we go that's pretty good Let's go for some slow motion. Oh yeah. As you can see, hammer fired. Uh, you can actually see the hammer through the slot there. Um, very good. Okay. Um, always closed bolt though, obviously. Um, okay, what else shall we do? Uh, let's unload it. We've got the mag release down here. There we go. What else? Um, Can unload it like this with the charging handle uh, and bayonet. Yes, please. Let's do bayonet. Oh yeah, this is one of the classic bayonets. Um, looks very nice. Just fixes to the barrel. Um, what else? What else can we do? Uh, oh yeah, of course. Uh, the barrel on this is not free floated. Uh, it has uh, the the handguard is connected directly to it. So, I mean, it's not it's not terrible, but it hinders accuracy. Obviously, um, it's just the type of platform that this is. Uh, you cannot avoid that, pretty much. Um, what else can we do? Rear sight. Okay, you can raise the the rear sight as you can see for uh, distance. I'm not sure how far it is calibrated for. Let's see, I think it's 800, that's a bit optimistic. I mean, this this type of rifle would be um, would be useful up to 300 meters, maybe 400 tops. Um, that's pretty much uh, what you can do with this, with this type of sight. Uh, what else can we do? X-ray, yes, let's do X-ray. Alright, here you can see the nice stack of cartridges in the magazine. Uh, and one in the chamber. And if we... Uh, just uh, put the uh, the finger on the trigger there. It just goes. And here you can see the gas piston working up here. Uh, let's see if we can get a better view of that. Yes, okay. So underneath is the barrel, as you can see. And then up above is the gas piston. The way this works is, every time the rifle fires, uh, the, um, the pressure from the cartridge uh, moves... Uh, after the after the the bullet uh, so when the bullet is exiting the barrel the pressure moves along with it and um, it gets to this point where where there's a little port in the barrel a little hole and uh, it passes through that hole into this upper cylinder um, where it impacts the the front of this gas piston uh, and that uh, basically pressure drives the system backwards uh, it is a long stroke piston so it goes all the way back um, and um, then uh, after it's done that the pressure just escapes out of these little holes on top uh, and that's how it works pretty much um, the the motion of it going back into battery is done by the, the recoil spring over here at the back that's pretty much uh, all that it is. It's it's quite simple. Uh, so if we um, give it some more uh, trigger, you can see the piston working, getting pressure, and uh, it moves backwards together with the bolt. Uh, that's how it unlocks it and uh, pushes it backwards. That's pretty good. Can we get some cutaways? Is that a cutaway? Uh, let's get rid of the uh, x-ray then. Uh, 
Oh yeah, that, that's a cutaway. Um, how is the X-ray still on? Weird. Okay, so here you can see the firing pin, the cartridge in the chamber, the bolt, um, and then the gas piston up front. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I think it's time that we take this thing apart and put it back together um, and uh, and uh, see how it comes apart. So uh, I've never completely like um, disassembled this rifle so it's gonna be new for me as well. Um, okay. Right, so we pull the mag first of all obviously. Uh, we're just gonna disassemble it normally, so top cover comes out, and let's do this stupid cleaning kit um, before I forget, obviously. Okay, uh, and the mag as well before I forget, if I can. There it is. Okay, right now, uh, let's do the bolt and the spring and everything comes out. Um, like this, there we are, okay, and then we've got um, the um, the gas piston tube, uh, this is the upper part of the handguard on here as well, uh, okay, what else do we have, um, let's do the, uh, the bolt, so we've got the actual bolt, uh, the bolt head basically, and then we've got the firing pin. There we go. There's an extractor there. Uh, that's it for the bolt head. And then we've got a, uh, a gas piston that comes off of the bolt carrier. And I think that's pretty much it on this side. Uh, on the receiver side, we've got uh, the cleaning rod can come out. There's a like a barrel nut at the end there. That's for attaching like a suppressor maybe or any type of muzzle device and also lets us uh, get the, um, the sight block off. Okay, there's the adjustment thing for the sight and then we've got the gas port. comes off. Uh, there's some stuff in there I think. No, anything in there. Okay, we've got the, um, the lower part of the handguard. Okay. And we've got, this is basically just a bit of nothing there, nothing special there. Um, and then we've got the side block, the rear side block. That comes off. Got the rear side with the uh, adjustments and stuff. The leaf. Okay. We've got this lever which uh, locks and unlocks the uh, top of the handguard and the gas piston tube. Uh, and we have some more stuff in the in the receiver. Okay, so the barrel should come out as well. There it goes. Okay, and uh, we've got it's not even attached in any other way other than the um, the gas the um, uh, side block holding it down. Uh, let's uh, take out some other stuff. So we've got this thing plate not sure what that's for uh, I think that's that's for like honestly I have no idea it's probably for some sort of uh, head spacing or something like that I don't know um, just like a replacement replaceable part for whatever reason okay so we've got the magazine release here and then we've got uh, the buttstock comes off uh, now these this rifle has nothing uh, like um, nothing uh, operational in the buttstock, which means that many of these were made with uh, folding stocks. It's definitely an option. Some folding stocks uh, better than others, um, but generally not that terribly good actually. Um, well, I guess it depends. There's so many uh, different variants of this rifle. Uh, they later went with uh, some um, 
other furniture other than wood some uh, some plastic stuff and uh, what uh, what what not uh, basically everything that you can imagine has been on this rifle at some point uh, we've got the sear and the hammer comes off spring doesn't come off apparently uh, hammers are very weird shape it's got this interesting like uh, braided line type spring which is very interesting very distinct we got the trigger assembly uh, and then the safety or the selector plate as it's called all right and that's it uh, not too complex there is uh, 96 part on this parts on this uh, however it's not really that complex and uh, you can generally uh, tell what everything is for so it's not really uh, it's not really problematic in any any type of uh, fashion okay so let's uh, put this safety selector back on or the the firing mode selector as it could be called as well um, we've got the trigger and then uh, we've got the hammer after that we've got the sear okay we've got this plate that goes in the receiver as well okay uh, and this is this just the receiver is the part that they were having trouble with as you can see this one is actually uh, I believe this one is at least looks like it is a uh, 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 um, a uh, not a stamp receiver uh, I forgot the word a mill receiver that's the one uh, so this is basically an example of an early gun okay um, we've got the uh, the socket for the for the buttstock. Uh, we've got some stuff here that we need to put in, like this uh, accessory spring and the butt plate and the um, the sling swivel. Can I not put that on? Oh yeah, there's this mechanism, and then this goes on. Okay, perfect. And then this should uh, just attach to the receiver with some screws there we go right uh, after that we've got the barrel that just goes in here and then we've got the side base no okay we've got the uh, what do we have holding the barrel in what is this part oh that's the mag release obviously um, I mean I'm fairly certain then that that part holds it on, but maybe not. Who knows? Uh, right. Oh, I probably have to reassemble the sight. Yeah, okay. We can do that. And then we've got this lever as well. And then the whole thing goes on. Perfect. Okay. With the pin. There we go. Uh, after that, we have... Uh, let's see. The lower... For forearm, forehand goes on, and then we've got the uh, the gas block that goes on. We have the the um, what else do we have? Oh, we have to reassemble the front side, obviously. There we go, and then this whole assembly goes on. Uh, there's also this uh, barrel nut basically the, which protects the threading on the front um, We have the uh, upper handguard it goes on that uh, gas piston um, tube Okay, and we could also uh, put the bolt assembly back together. So we've got um, an extractor and uh, We should have a firing pin as well. There we go uh, and we've got also a gas piston and then the bolt goes in here after that we can go for uh, putting the whole assembly in the gun uh, together with the uh, the spring and the guide rod assembly uh, which goes on there into the gun perfect after that we can also put on the pistol grip uh, there's nothing much in the pistol grip uh, except for a very long screw holding it on 
We've also got this uh, stupid accessories case that needs to go back in the buttstock of the of the rifle, and uh, we can uh, reassemble the mag as well. Perfect. Uh, now there were many different iterations of the magazines as well, um, like uh, different patterns of them. Um, some were steel, like ribbed, like this one for strength. Some were uh, later ones were uh, just uh, plastic. Um, nowadays they're using plastic ones as well because they're lighter, obviously. And here we go, one reassembled AK-47. Uh, so I think uh, this is probably enough for this video. Uh, I think I've pretty much told you everything I know about this rifle. Um, you can definitely look up uh, every every conceivable information about it online because it is uh, an incredibly well-known rifle any person that doesn't know anything about guns will know what an AK-47 is uh, so um, I'm gonna leave you at that uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, if you liked it you can press the like button and subscribe to my channel you can also check out my other videos and uh, I will see you next time